Hello traders, this is Ilya Spivak, currency strategist with Daily FX, and we're going to be looking at the outlook for the financial markets in the week ahead. Before we get started, if you guys could please type into the question box, let me know if you can hear me, let me know if the video is coming through okay for you, uh, and we will begin. All right, looks like we're all set. So let's begin uh, with essentially what the markets left us with last week. And the most important aspect of it, uh, actually looking at the U.S. dollar here, uh, because this was really a week where everything happened essentially in the final 48 and really the final 24 hours of last week. So note here that the US dollar has been basically at a standstill since the end of March and remained so really through most of last week until of course momentum picked up on Friday. Now what happened there was twofold. First, we got that surprise U.S. missile strike against Syria. The second thing we got was the U.S. jobs report. And there was really a uh, very interesting response here from markets. So take a look right here. This is essentially what happened. So this white line is the priced in Fed policy outlook for 2017. The turquoise line is the US bond yield. So this is uh, Treasury futures flipped upside down. So baseline 10 year US yields. Appropriately enough, the green line is the U.S. dollar, and the yellow one is gold. So notice what happened here. Here was the Syria strike. We got risk aversion. So yields fell as bonds rose. The dollar fell as those yields uh, fell initially. Gold surged because, of course, yields were down, and that is a situation in, in which gold gains because its relative appeal is increased. This red line I just put up here is the average value of the yen. You can see that soared here as well. And likewise, if you look at crude oil, that also raced higher. Now look at what has happened since then. This sort of orange line right here is the US jobs report. Note, once this happens, US rate hike bets rise, the dollar accelerates higher, yields recover, gold sets its session high and sinks, which would ultimately produce a very dramatic sort of chart on gold. You can see right here, this was the Friday session. So we almost took out critical resistance only to race back. Now what was it about the US jobs report that did this? First and foremost, the payrolls number, the headline uh, increase was obviously smaller than expected and by quite a long mile. But at the same time, wage inflation remained near eight-year highs and most critically, the jobless rate fell. And not only did the headline jobless rate fall, the much broader U6 jobless rate that includes not only people that are without work and looking for it, but also people that aren't necessarily looking, but are of 
working age and are generally eligible to work. So it's a much broader definition of what unemployed means. And all of that fell, which actually suggests that the smaller gain in payrolls had more to do with the recovery becoming more mature and the labor market becoming tighter, which ultimately is inflationary and supportive of Fed rate hikes, than really anything ominous or anything discouraging. So on balance, we ended up with a jobs report that was very encouraging of Fed tightening. And herein, we saw the sort of push and pull between risk sentiment and the, the outlook for the Fed. Perhaps most critically, as you can see, the U.S. dollar actually rallied throughout. Even though initially as yields declined, it certainly took a leg lower. Now, this sets up an interesting narrative for the week ahead. We open with a focus on Fed policy as we get a speech from uh, Fed Chair Yellen. Now, she's known for being fairly even-handed, for speaking uh, without really making bombastic statements. So, generally, we would expect that she's going to stick largely to a familiar script. That would imply that she's going to bolster the case for continued tightening, if not the degree of tightening. But what she might also do if the release of minutes from uh, the last Fed meeting are telling, which we saw last week, she might also talk about the beginnings of reducing the Fed's balance sheet, which would be a further acceleration in removing stimulus. She might also suggest that this could happen as soon as this year, at some point. At least the minutes that we saw again last week seem to suggest as much. If this happens, we could see the U.S. dollar continue to march higher as Fed rate hikes firm. However, this push and pull between the Fed outlook and the risk sentiment situation is, of course, going to make things messy because we also have a meeting between G7 foreign ministers today where U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is going to explain to his counterparts the new U.S. position on Syria and whether the U.S. now supports regime change as most European allies do. If that's the case, then we may get a sense from this meeting that there is a broader Middle Eastern conflict that's going to be in the cards here. That could certainly continue to boost the price of oil amid regional supply disruption fears. And Indeed, if you look at what crude oil has been doing, it is obviously finding a great deal of support here, having bounced from this supporting line. You can see it's at a monthly high at this point. And the break above resistance at 5204 suggests we may yet get a further leg upward. It might also be a driver of broader risk aversion, in which case we might see the yen continue to strengthen. And to some extent, we might see a level of skepticism about the Fed's ability to continue to tighten because if in fact there is broad-based risk aversion that is a backdrop against which the Fed is going to be reluctant to really step up efforts to remove stimulus. In fact it might even back off on some of its more uh, aggressive prognostications. So with that in mind 
this next 24 hours, the first day of the week really, are really going to set up this conflict, this push and pull between geopolitics and the Fed outlook and we'll see which one is going to come out on top and how these dynamics are going to work. But this first 24 hours might very well be uh, significantly telling, especially since we have more G7 on Tuesday, and then by midweek, Rex Tillerson is heading over to speak with Russia, which of course is a backer of Bashar al-Assad, the current uh, leader in Syria, an opponent of the U.S. airstrikes and a more involved role for the West. And of course, that's going to be an interesting uh, meeting in and of itself, because here the U.S. will, of course, go speak with a country with troops on the ground in Syria and either say, well, the G7 has decided that we're going to push to remove Assad, how is this going to work with Russia or not? And so that will be very interesting. Moving on into Tuesday, besides that G7 meeting, the day two of the foreign minister's meeting, we're also going to get UK CPI, uh, the expectations there for the headline inflation rate to remain unchanged at 2.3%, while the core rate ticks down a little from 2 to 1.9%. Now, that may be something that passes with relatively little fanfare, mostly because the Bank of England isn't really looking to go anywhere fast as the Brexit situation becomes formal and the process of negotiation gets underway. The interesting thing is UK economic data has been increasingly underperforming relative to consensus forecasts, which may suggest that analysts are having a rosy view of the economy, rosier relative to what reality has actually confirmed. And with that, we may see a downside surprise being generated uh, as that reality once again clashes with consensus forecasts. In that case, given the BOE is already dovish, we may actually get a push lower in sterling on the speculation that the BOE's dovish instincts will have data cover once again. They haven't recently because, of course, uh, the data has been generally uh, pointing away from the need to ease. But if the data is starting to turn and the BOE is generally dovish on Brexit grounds, that may be enough of a foundation to start talking about further easing and may actually weigh on sterling. So we may get the next leg down, once again coming off this resistance on uh, cable and euro pound having hit this supporting line may attempt a bounce later in the day we get the german zoo survey of um, analyst sentiment and that is uh, unlikely to give a particularly strong lead for the euro considering the ecb per Mario Draghi last week, is firm, uh, firmly locked into wait-and-see mode. Moving on to Wednesday, we have uh, the release of Chinese CPI figures. These are expected to show that the headline inflation rate rose from 0.8 to 1%. And the interesting thing here, if we actually get a firm number, that could weigh against the Aussie dollar because it could encourage further monetary tightening from the PBOC. In that event, the presumption would be that demand for Australia's 
mineral exports might be diminished and we might get further Aussie weakness. We're also going to get UK jobs data and uh, BOE Governor Carney is going to speak. His message will probably be familiar with Dovish. The jobs data, probably a non-event in that context. We are also, interestingly, going to get the monetary policy announcement from the Bank of Canada. Now, here things get interesting because, of course, one of the major considerations in Canada is the price of oil, and clearly that has recovered smartly. However, we have seen also that uh, the Bank of Canada has been somewhat reluctant to really step up hawkish rhetoric, even as we get a pickup in inflation, even as we get a um, improvement in the overall dynamics. Inflation, in fact, uh, as of the um, beginning of the year has returned to around the target area. 2% for the last reading, down from just 2.1% uh, in the end of uh, 2016. So it would seem like data is starting to shift such that um, maybe the Bank of Canada could adopt a less overtly dovish view, but they have been reluctant to do that. So if the markets look at the evidence here and, and think, well, maybe the BOC has scope to moderate its message, and then the BOC does not, that may give a significant leg higher for dollar CAD and spell more broad a Canadian dollar weakness, giving us a leg higher after this range was broken. You'll notice that on Friday, when uh, crude oil spiked, we saw dollar CAD race lower and then ultimately re uh, return back to hold this former range top as support. Very conspicuously hold it, as a matter of fact. You can see the close on the day was 34.02. That line is that 33.97, so a mere five pips there. On Thursday, we're going to get Australian employment data leading us off. Expectation is for a 20K net gain in hiring. But again, Australian economic data has softened somewhat over uh, the past month or so relative to consensus forecasts, paving the way for a downside surprise. Now, it's also important to note that as we get into the um, end of the week here, we're also going to have the market starting to thin out because the Easter holiday is coming up around most international financial centers, and so liquidity should start to get diminished, particularly given the geopolitical risks that are now swirling around and discouraging investors from holding positions through holidays, through weekends, and through generally thinner conditions. Very important to keep in mind as well, of course, because that may see a round of profit taking on established moves. So although this jobs data, for example, in Australia might surprise on the downside that might weigh on the Aussie as we come into the end of the week follow through on that might be relatively small and actually the Aussie may ultimately correct higher not because anybody's particularly optimistic but because 
it has been falling for quite a bit here and as markets wind down exposure shorter term bets against it might be unwound so very important to keep in mind that reversal risk starts getting acute into the end of the week then on Friday we get the last burst of major US economic data and the focus once again returns to US monetary policy the core inflation rate is expected to tick higher as uh, CPI numbers uh, show that the rate of uh, price growth excluding volatile items like food and energy rose at a pace of 2.3 percent year-on-year that's uh, up from 2.2 uh, percent uh, retail sales expected to see a little bit of a ding though uh, down 0 0.1 percent after rising by the same amount in the prior month we'll see if these higher inflation numbers are ultimately going to be helpful uh, from a Fed policy outlook perspective uh, because of course uh, the higher inflation goes the closer the Fed feels to its ultimate target of price stability and given last week's jobs data the dual mandate of that price stability in the context of um, full employment quote unquote looks ever closer and that's the week ahead let's take a look at some of your questions here Chris is saying are you still looking to express your views through euro yen and Aussie dollar I'm not sure what you mean by still looking I mean in, in the sense that I still have these trades yes but I'm not looking to necessarily put something new on I still have my euro yen short I still have my Aussie dollar short uh, the Aussie dollar short was taken right here on the break of this line the first target was hit on Friday right here the second half of the trade is now uh, in in play with uh, a stop loss at the break-even level we haven't taken out this bottom though and so I'm uh, leery of adding to this so far we'll see what happens as far as euro yen goes here's euro yen it is still edging downward here I entered short r right there or re-entered short I initially entered sh short up here took profit here waited this out and re-entered here so uh, I essentially missed all of this and got back into this move basically where it bottomed last time so I'm looking for this to hit an initial target of 117.03 which is this fib down here and I am in fact still holding it the stop is a close above um, 118.50 which essentially would be a break of this downward sloping channel so we'll see how that goes if uh, geopolitics continues to keep risk sentiment on the defensive I suspect euro yen will continue to decline in a context of broader yen strength Pete is asking about euro dollar says I closed my euro dollar short before the close on Friday and was wondering if you could go over a current risk reward for re-entry sure so here is euro dollar and actually I was contemplating adding to this short obviously uh, it hit its first target here on Friday I took half off the stop is now at break even and now that it's actually taken this level out I was thinking well maybe I should put the full position back on because it looks like we're gonna have another leg down here but what ultimately stopped me was this so it's unclear in my mind that this line was necessarily broken and 
There's, of course, a variety of ways that you can set it up. You can set it up like this just as well, where you capture all of these levels and this. And, of course, this makes for excellent support, potentially. So I'm going to hold off on adding to this because the risk-reward at this stage doesn't look attractive. I'd say um, at this point I'm going to wait. Actually, it's uh, all the more disconcerting considering that there seems to be s symmetry with this channel top as well. So I just noticed that as a matter of fact. So I am going to hold off for now unless we get a breakdown this way, maybe followed by a bounce and then I'll add some more but for now I'm happy to have uh, the exposure that I have and I wouldn't necessarily rush to get more short at least for now uh, Victoria is asking for a look at Aussie yen we can certainly take a look at that Here's Aussie Yen. And you can see here, let's just clean these levels up a little bit. So if you take a pretty casual look here, just with the naked eye, you can see here was what looked like trend support something like this give or take and it looks like that's been at this point overturned and this now is the next move downward so if we were to fib this we can go from the high where this is the dominant move down to the latest low this is the latest correction and you can see now that gives you a range of levels where support is 8308 resistance is 8359 now where i would be concerned about this is the range is a mere 51 pips whereas you can see ATR is 80, 81, 82 if we round it off. So it's a bit narrow in here for a trade. So I would not be especially enthused to take it. The other thing is if you look at where support comes in, the trend if if we take these peak highs that uh, is still relatively speaking uh, pointed higher and there's of course multiple ways that you can set this up you could just as well put this line here to capture more of this but if you just looked at the wicks so from this bottom this way it would seem that a trend has been broken but if you look here then not quite yet in which case I would maybe wait to get through this line then set up the much larger fib from here to here where essentially I would look for, let's take these minor levels off here, so this w would essentially be a level of former support now resistance, maybe something like this, 
and I would then look for a break through here to then extend down to 80.36. But generally speaking, I would be waiting here, mostly because uh, Aussie Yen is, a, is, is an extraordinarily risk-geared uh, currency pair, and as we just spent quite a while talking uh, about, there's a sort of tug of war here between different interpretations of what recent events mean for sentiment. So I wouldn't want to rush into judgment on something so risk-geared as Euro yen. All right, unfortunately, we're out of time here, so we're going to call it a day. As always, you can bring your questions anytime via Twitter at Ilya Spivak, and you can join me for my trading Q&A midweek. You can, of course, see the, the webinar calendar for that. So right here is the trading Q&A. Feel free to register and join it, and that is a session where I answer any and all questions and only answer questions, so everything is fair game. Thanks again, everyone. Have a lovely week. Good luck out there. Take care.